Hi folks, welcome to RJ Impact. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most audacious jewel thefts of all time. The escapade that we're going to talk about should be made into a film. Indeed, it would rival in execution many, many that you can think about, like The Pink Panther, Ocean's 8, Heist, Entrapment, and many, many more. If you like this video, then please subscribe, and if you hit the notification button, you won't miss out on any future videos when they're published. This is the star of the Empress Cece, part of a 27 diamond and pearl set of hair ornaments worn by Elizabeth of Bavaria, consort of Francis Joseph I from the Schrombrunn Palace in Vienna. You can see it being worn in this picture of Elizabeth and the star is literally the star of the set. The reason for this is that it is the only one left. It has a reputation too. As well as what you're about to see, this wasn't the only time it's been involved in a crime. The only person ever to wear it, Cece, met an untimely death as she was killed by an assassin's knife. In 1998, staff at the Schrombrunn Palace in Vienna made an alarming discovery. The star of the Empress Cece was not there. In fact, the original had been replaced by a fake. They had no idea when it was what. The staff called the police and they in turn led an investigation that would eventually lead to our protagonist in this tale. Gerald Daniel Blanchard and a grandmother's basin in Winnipeg, Canada. Gerald was born in 1972 and is best known for his orchestration of this heist and a number of other complex frauds and heists on at least three continents. How on earth did he manage to pull off the theft of the CC Star? Well, as far as the execution went, police, along with Blanchard's confession, have managed to put the following timeline together. Blanchard had visited the palace on at least one other occasion, surreptitiously recording the entrances, exits, grounds and alarm systems. Using the visits and his recordings, he made a meticulous plan. It's thought that on the day of the heist, he visited the palace again, with his wife and father-in-law all posing as tourists. During the visit, he, or they, put a number of elements into place that would be key later that night. And it was later that night that a small aeroplane flew across a dark sky over Vienna, and as the palace came into sight, the lone passenger told the German pilot to slow down. Having read the weather and knowing the optimum point to bail, the passenger adjusted his parachute one last time and jumped out. That passenger was Gerald Blanchard, and a few moments later, he had landed on the roof of the palace unseen. After bundling up his parachute, he made his way across the roof, and one of the key elements that he'd put into place earlier that day now paid off. A window was left off the latch, and Blanchard eased himself in. As he stepped onto the floor of the palace, the second element he'd put into place paid off. The alarm had been disabled. It was an easy step from there to make his way to the CC Star. And finally, in what was possibly the coup de grace, he replaced the original CC star with a replica. And where did he have the replica made? Well, he didn't. In the third element he'd prepared earlier that day, he'd purchased a cheap replica from the tourist shop in the palace. And it was this that he placed back into the display. Making his way back out of the museum, he stepped out into the dark and scurried away, hiding his parachute along the way. Back into the mainstream Vienna evening, he mingled with the crowd and then disappeared. It took two weeks before the swap was discovered. Blanchard's parachute had already been found, but no one had connected it with any crime at that point because no one knew that there had been any crime. The loss of a priceless part of Austria's history then remained unsolved until Blanchard was arrested in Canada on fraud and robbery charges for cleaning out financial institutions at night without using any violence. One example of the non-violent robberies provided was from May 2004, when someone robbed a new branch of the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce in Winnipeg siphoning off half a million dollars from its ATMs the weekend just before its official opening. Oh dear. After his arrest, he offered to give up the Star of CC to the Canadian authorities. 
Police recovered a videotape on one of many raids into Blanchard's high-end properties leading up to the theft which showed the calculated planning involved. He then led the police, via his lawyer, to his grandmother's house in Winnipeg, Canada, where, hidden in her basement, they recovered the jewel. In the aftermath to this and during the police investigation, Blanchard never identified his accomplices in either this crime or any of the other global heists he was involved in. In fact, in return for the star, Blanchard's co-accused would only receive conditional sentences. Blanchard was the only one who served any significant prison time as a result, and the priceless Cockert Diamond Pearl Star of CC was returned to Austria by a Canadian Crown attorney in 2009. Blanchard pleaded guilty at the Court of the Queen's Bench of Manitoba on 7th of November 2007 to 16 charges of robbery and fraud in Canada and elsewhere in the world. According to one source, if Blanchard had been sentenced in the US, then he'd face a maximum of 164s in prison for the charges he'd pled guilty to. However, he was sentenced to just eight years in prison in Winnipeg, Canada, and it was in fact his lawyer, Danny Gunn, from Campbell Gunn Innes Law Firm, who actually turned over the Cockert Diamond Pearl. Blanchard was paroled after serving two years to a halfway house. After prison, in January 2010, Blanchard was released and he was reported to be attempting to develop himself a new career as a security consultant. It doesn't seem that this was very successful. Apparently, in his early life, aged 19, he was arrested for shoplifting and this trait for theft hadn't left him. In 2017, he was again arrested for shoplifting, this time gaming consoles from a Best Buy in Canada and not quite the prestigious high-risk daring do of his previous escapades. Well, that's it for now. There's a lot more to Blanchard's story, but I wanted to cover his most famous heist in this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.